Before you can get started with Excel, you need to understand how the main interface is organized and some terminology. Individual Excel files are called workbooks, and each one can contain numerous worksheets. There is always at least one worksheet when you start a new Excel workbook, and this is labeled as Sheet 1 by default. When I choose to use Excel, I usually have a plan for the data that I need to organize, so I start from a blank worksheet. But you should know that numerous templates are available. You can think about these as pre-formatted worksheets that can give you a head start. To access the templates, go to File, New, and choose one that you would like to use. For example, if I click on 5-day event schedule, it will show a preview, and then if I click on Create, it will open and I can modify its contents. For now, I'm going to return to the blank worksheet that I started with. It's impossible to miss this large area of white rectangles because they take up so much space on the screen. Each one of these rectangles is called a cell, and normally, each cell contains one piece of information that's called a value. This information can be expressed using letters or numbers, and it can be many, many things. It could be a name, number, date, label, or address. After covering the basics, in another video, I'll explain how you can enter a formula as a value, but we'll stick to the preliminary details for now. The cells are organized into rows, which extend horizontally across the worksheet to the right, and columns, which extend vertically downward. This pattern doesn't go on forever, but you can have more than a million rows and more than 16,000 columns in a single worksheet, so most regular users will never run out of space. Headings across the top of the worksheet and down its left side help us locate any individual cell by assigning its specific coordinates. Letters are used for columns and numbers are used for rows. You can move around within the worksheet by placing the cursor over a cell and clicking, using the arrow keys, pressing tab to move toward the right, or enter to move downward. If I click in any cell, the name box will show the coordinates of the cell that is currently selected. For example, when I click on cell C3, you will see C3 in the name box. The formula bar occupies a prominent position above the worksheet. Whereas cells normally display values, the formula bar will display the formula that underlies a specific value, if one exists, or just the plain value. Normally it makes sense to start off by concentrating your data in the upper left corner, but you can scroll to the right or down by using these scroll bars. To enter data into a cell, click on it and then start typing. You can type within the cell or the formula bar. Press enter when you finish typing. Now cell B3 is selected, and I'm going to click in the formula bar and continue typing. Again, press enter when you finish. To select more than one adjacent cell, click and drag to make the selection. This selection can be horizontal, vertical, or both. To select a row or column, click on the heading for that row or column. The font commands are similar to Word, which is usually already familiar to people who are beginning to learn Excel. Formatting can be applied after the value has been entered or before typing. 
I'll select cell B2, which already contains text, and then I'll apply bold. Alternatively, I could have selected all of row 2, perhaps I'll increase the font size, and now you'll notice if I type inside of cell A2, larger letters will appear. Compare this to the default text in cell A3. Watch this video again if you didn't catch all of the terminology, because it's important to grasp all the different parts of Excel's interface before moving on.